This is the new Nikon Z30. Nikon are saying this is going to be the perfect camera for anyone who wants to vlog. Now, I'm not a massive vlogger, but since I've been based in Wex London, I've been dying to go on the chairlift that runs from the O2 and over the river. I'm not a, not a massive fan of heights. Heights are okay. Don't really like drops. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, I think this will be the perfect vlogging test. So we're going to jump on one of the Uber boats, head down the river to Greenwich. And whilst I'm on the boat cruising along, I'm going to tell you a bit more about the new Z30. Inside we have an APS-C sensor, or in Nikon speak, a DX sensor, which is 20.9 megapixels. For video, the Z30 can shoot 4K 30p, or if you want to slow things down, you can drop the quality to 1080p and shoot at 120 frames per second. You can also shoot up to 125 minutes of continuous video, which means whether you're recording yourself baking a cake or you're capturing the full match at your local women's football club, the Z30 will be able to get the lot. You can also shoot that slow motion in camera. So instead of shooting 120 frames per second, the camera does it for you so you don't have to slow anything down in edit. And that gives you four times slow motion. Or if you're shooting 24p, then up to five times slow motion. I got confused. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I thought the boat would stop at North Greenwich, but it didn't, it just stopped at Greenwich. And I don't know if you can see on there, but the chairlift is like miles that way. So we're going to explore around here. We're going to see if we end up heading over there, but we're going to explore around here for now. So I'm going to get the Z30 out and see what Greenwich has to offer because I've actually never been here. I keep forgetting there's no viewfinder. There's no viewfinder, but it does have a fully articulated screen as you would expect if you're going to do vlogging. Otherwise it's going to be a bit difficult. You should have to guess. So right now I'm in vlogging mode. I'm using the Manfrotto Pixie on the Z30. Got the fully articulated screen out. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a sound test for you. Now this does have two stereo mics on top of the camera that you're gonna be hearing in a second. Right now I'm going into George's camera and I'm using the wireless Go To's and I'm wearing a Sennheiser ME2 lavalier microphone. But right now we're gonna to swap to the Z30. So now I'm using the audio, just the built-in microphones within the Z30 so you can see what they sound like. And whilst you're listening and deciding whether you like them or not, I'm gonna talk you through the ports on this camera. So on the side we have a USB-C, so you can use that to transfer your images or videos, or of course charge the battery in camera we have a type D HDMI out and we do have a microphone input so if you're not liking what you're hearing right now you can put your own shotgun microphone maybe in if you want a bit more ambient noise or you can maybe use something like the wireless go to's and get some nice clean speech if you are vlogging on your own so now it's time to find something as interesting to do as going on a big chairlift because I messed up the directions oh well. one annoying thing I have found is that um, this is very dark at the moment, obviously, and that's because by the time you bring the screen round, um, you then can't move any of the dials and make the camera do anything. So right now, I'm on what I was on outside, I just went to change it because the screen's facing towards me and I can actually judge the light, but I can't change the settings once the screen's facing towards me, which I think is a bit of a flaw, actually. The light might not be as nice for video today, but it is really nice for photo. It's a very contrasty day which is not always ideal especially if, well especially for me i don't like shooting landscapes really contrasty i quite like it when there's really soft light like early morning light but somewhere like this where you've got these columns and you've got light shooting through these big sort of big lanterns hanging up and everything it's a really interesting light to photograph with it's nice and it's looking great on the screen so hopefully it looks good in edit if you do want to capture some action or you don't want to miss a moment, this can shoot up to 11 frames per second as well. So if there's one specific thing you really want to get, even if it's like a street photo and someone's in a really specific position, you've been waiting for it, but it doesn't have to be action, but it might just be a moment you really don't want to miss. 11 frames per second, you can capture it with this, which I think is really nice actually. And it's useful just right now, like um, there's one person walking towards those doors over there, like I've got one chance. So just shoot it on continuous, and you know you're going to get the moment you want. I love when you come to old places like this and you can see where they've cleaned it. It's just mad, I think, to see the like layers of filth. I kind of like it when they leave some of it on so you can see how bad it was and how light the color is now where they've cleaned it. You can even see all the drips down here, which is kind of cool. I really like that. That's, uh, 
I mean, I'm, I'm pretty easy to please, really, thinking about it. London's newest food vlogger. It is delicious though, it's really delicious. But I already ate half it by the time I started taking pictures, <laughs> so they look terrible. I got too excited. Some pigeons having an absolute field day with some leftovers. Pigeons are just like, I love them, but they're so stupid, aren't they? They're such stupid creatures. So you watch any other bird try and steal people's food and they're quite like neat about it. Pigeons will just knock everything off the table, draw the most attention like possible. Now we've just filmed the vibration reduction test and for that George was filming me walking so you got an idea of how it looked. And both of us have noticed throughout today just how light this feels in your hands. It's only 405 grams. So if you are traveling about, you just want a camera to chuck in your bag, or just maybe you want to just wear it on your shoulder, this isn't really going to add much weight to what you're taking out with you. I think that's so important for this kind of sort of vloggy, a bit of stills content type setup, a content creator setup. You want it to be manageable and just feel nice and easy in your hands, and the Z30 really does. If you are considering this as more of a content creator camera for yourself, there's a couple of things I think you should take into account. Now, one of those is there isn't a headphone port. So checking back your sound isn't very easy to do. It does have an inbuilt speaker, so you can make sure there is actually sound. And we do have gauges on the screen as well, so you can see what you're coming through at. You can see your levels. Next up on top, I do think you need some sort of dead cat over here. As far as I've seen from the information I have at the moment, I haven't seen that Nikon make one. I know there is one from Small Rig, so it's worth taking that into account. I think just because of how these sit, I think it'd be nicer to have those. Um, also, the tripod that I'm using at the moment, so I'm just using the little Pixie. I think if you're gonna have a camera like this, a setup like this, Nikon do make something called the ML L7, I think, which is a basically a mini tripod that has a remote in it. And that allows you to record and press, take photos and select things on that remote. So when you're like this, you can change things, you can press record and not have to reach over the camera. It will really, really speed up your edit so that when you've got all those clips to put together, you don't have to constantly top and tell every single clip because you're able to do it on the remote itself. So I think that's worth taking into account if you're looking at this as an option for you as a content creator. Now, as I've mentioned, you can shoot up to 11 frames per second if you're looking to shoot something that has some action or you just don't want to miss a shot. And you can produce, jeez, 14-bit raw images as well. So in terms of the stills capability of this camera, Nikon might want to put this, push this for vlogging. And it is certainly designed to be more of that style of camera. But if you are a general content creator, you travel, you're into food, whatever it is, then this might be a really, really nice camera for you because not only does it have that vlogging side of things, but the stills performance is pretty good too. So this is the Greenwich Tunnel, which is like a foot tunnel that goes underneath the Thames. It feels very damp and weird, but it's really cool for photography, like the lights and stuff are really good. So I'm gonna get some photos here, hopefully before it gets too busy. Testing my handheld skills here. I'm at three seconds. Oh, how are we looking? That one's a bit blurry. That one's not bad for three seconds, handheld. See what we can get up to. This is always a good, good way of testing the vibration reduction. That's bang sharp at two seconds. That's always the way I test it personally. That's completely just useless for everyone else and <laughs> just helpful for me but it's pretty good that's uh, just under what i can get on the r5 and the r5's got one of the best image stabilization systems i've ever used so i'm pretty happy with that okay so we've just finished we're sort of finishing up the day we just bumped into some like a well like not, an old man and a tiny girl <laughs> yeah, who just had a snake um they said they were really nice they weren't like you know, I don't think they'd like stolen the snake, <laughs> but they, they seem like they really loved the snake. So we got some pictures with that. Well, George did. I it got some pictures of him. It was a boa though, which is pretty cool. It was Apparently a boa constrictor. Apparently going to grow up to eight meters. Yeah, George made a friend for life there. Yeah, pretty much. But um, yeah, we're going to wrap up the video now. It's It's been really cool going around with the Z30 just because it's so lightweight. It's really easy to walk around with. Um, and hopefully, obviously I haven't seen them yet, but hopefully the images are looking good for you guys as well on the video bits. 
So we're going to wrap up now. We're going to go jump back on the boat, head home. Now, if you want to find out more about the Z30, obviously there's a ton of information on the website as there always is. I'll pop a link in the description for you. And if you want to ask any questions, you can, of course, put them in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. But for now, thanks for watching. And I hope you join me again soon for some more videos from Wax Photo Video.